Hi everyone, this is Ron with Neowen and today we have here a couple of watches from Honor. They were announced just this week on Friday and we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at them. So there's the Honor Watch ES. This is a, the more affordable of the two, it's 99 euro 99 cents. And this is the GS Pro. So this one is a more rugged smartwatch for outdoors activities. And they have some things in common. I mean, they're both Honor smartwatches, but this one is 249.99. So it's much more expensive, but obviously it has some additional capabilities to go with that. So we're going to go ahead and take a look and we're going to start with a cheaper one just out of curiosity. I always like saving the best for last. So you can tell right away who's the, the favorite child here because there is no indication of the box on the box of what's inside aside from these little stickers down here. And I'm assuming if you buy it, you get a, a better box, but not not like this, so you get the watch right away. It is a, it feels tiny, but not only that, it's super light. Uh, but before we get to that, let's just take a look at the rest of the box. Here you have the charging cable. So it doesn't have a traditional sort of cradle like the, the one stuff you see, because I mean, it's also not a round watch to be fair. So the cable just goes directly from USB to the little pin connector here at the tip and it just charges like that. Uh, there's no power adapter though, no power brick, so you need to have one of those yourself or plug it into a computer or something. And here there's just a manual that's in Chinese, so I have no idea what that says, but uh, I'm sure it's probably fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. And the watch itself is here and it's tiny. It's Pretty darn light, so it's 21 grams according to um, Honor and oh, without the straps, of course, and the, the straps, of course, add a little bit more weight. And I feel like it's because it's plastic, I actually don't know for sure because the materials don't really say anything about the, the press materials, don't really say anything about what material they're using. I will say it feels like metal on the sides, but I'm not completely sure. The, the back is definitely plastic, but the the frame might be metal. And so it's a it's a nice looking. I'm gonna take this off. It's a nice looking uh, watch. I do I think I do prefer a rectangular display like I have my Apple Watch here. But this one is very very tall comparatively. This one the Apple feels a little more squarish, and this is very rectangular. Um, it's also got like a sort of matte finish to it instead of the, the glossy finish I have here. Uh, I do like the band though. It, it's a nice flexible rubber. It's not like very hard. And you got a ton of stops here. If you want to adjust the strap, um, the, the size for your wrist, it's got so many options. And this, I'm assuming this also makes it very breathable. So hopefully sweat doesn't build up as much and it lets you feel a little more relaxed. I would say that's a flaw, a flaw with the, um, the Apple Watch is that it doesn't have as much adjustability and it can get very sweaty easily under the, the wrist, the watch band. So this looks pretty nice. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on. There's only one button on the watch, by the way. And it's this, it turns on. The display looks quite nice. So this is an AMOLED display like most smartwatches have. And it looks, the colors look quite nice. It's 1.64. Uh, the vertical resolution is, I believe, 4, 456 height by 280 width. So it's not super like pixel dense, but it, it looks, just fine. For some reason, the date is in Chinese there, even though I've set the language to English. And parts of the UI are in English, so I'm assuming this is in final software. Um, but yeah, it looks fine. I, it's, here's the thing. I've never used the Huawei's watch. 
and even smart watches in general. This is like my first remarkable experience. So uh, I don't really know a lot about this. So you swipe down, you get the quick actions here, um, as usual. You get this is similar to Android um, to Wear OS. You swipe up, you see your notifications, and you swipe sideways to see your physical activity. Unlike Wear OS, here the the interface just scroll. It's a sort of rotating thing, so you can scroll either way, and it just takes you back to the start, to the the clock, the watch face eventually. And it's got pretty much what you expect: heart rate tracking. Stress monitoring, I'm interested in that because I don't have that, so I'm, I, I wonder what this is like. Uh, weather, of course, it's in Fahrenheit, hopefully I can address that because I don't really like that. Uh, a music player, I don't think this watch has internal storage for music, but you can, of course, use it as a remote for your phone, I'm assuming, again, let's not, I, I can say too much. And of course, um, steps. Uh, exercise time and activity sessions. I'm guessing that's what these, what each of these, each of these things mean. And then, of course, you press the button on the side and this takes you to the menu. So the menu has a bunch of options. You have, uh, you can start workouts or see your records. You can see your heart rate, uh, oxygen, blood oxygen monitoring or SpO2, activity records, which I guess is different from workout records, sleep, stress, breathing exercises. A music player, which I assume, yeah, so some of these things are accessible by just swiping sideways, uh, from the, from the watch face, but you do get a bunch of options here. Stopwatch timer, of course, alarm, a flashlight, which I assume just turns your screen. This is actually quite useful. I've found that this is, um, a nice feature to have. It's not, of, of course, it's not like the same as having an LED flash. But it, this is quite nice. And of course you can find your phone, then you have settings. There's a bunch of watch faces you can choose from. Uh, out of the box. Oh, I like that one. I like lime green. So this is actually quite nice. Um, there's a bunch of them. I believe you can also set an always on display. Yeah, so there's a standby watch face, which I think, yeah, so it says if you, if you use an always on display, of course, battery goes down, specifically to say here, by half. So I assume now if I go back home, uh, I don't know how long I need to wait for this to switch to the standby watch face. Hopefully not very long. Um, let's just try to leave it inactive a little bit, see if it switches. There you go. So that's the always on display. It's colored, which is nice and i actually kind of like the way that looks i i'm not a big into always on displays though i have to admit i just i don't see a, a lot of use in it uh, i don't if i if i'm if i want to check the time i'm gonna raise my wrist anyways it's gonna wake up the watch right so why do i need the screen to always be on it, i feel like it would be unlikely that i would uh, be looking at the watch from such a weird angle. Uh, this is where you can manage your, the pages here for your watch, that you see from your watch face. And there's just a bunch of, uh, settings here for when the display goes to sleep. Uh, screen on. I don't know what this means actually. Five minutes. And, oh, so I assume this is for the, the the always on display so it don't actually turn off it's not technically always on only up to 20 minutes if i'm assuming this correctly i could be wrong there and then you can choose a vibration strength for an alarm set to not disturb workout settings you can enable the watch to automatically detect your workouts if you want and just a bunch of settings. Uh, of course, if you go into the workouts, uh, if I can find it, there you go. There's, uh, I believe, 95 workout modes on this thing, so it's pretty... Uh, there's a few default ones here. Then there's 12 fitness courses. So these are like sort of short guides to help you do specific kinds of exercises. Um, focus on, you know, 
the specific parts of your body. So there's neck and shoulder relaxation. Exercise at work sounds like a great idea. Full body stretch, advanced chest workout. These seem somewhat uh, unrelated from each other. So how do you get an advanced chest workout? That's level four. I feel like there should be a less advanced chest workout leading up to that, but there isn't. You just, but whatever. Um, and then there's just a bunch of, you know, actual workout sessions, um, exercise sessions. You, you have a bunch of presets or you can go here and find even more options. CrossFit functional. I don't, there is a lot of things like <laughs> I wouldn't know how to use all of this, but there's a ton of things here. So it don't track all of this laser tag. Well, that's certainly an exercise. So yeah, so that's the ES, uh, that's the software. Uh, in terms of the specs, it's hard to say much because uh, Honor actually doesn't tell me much. The, there's no chipset, RAM, storage on this. Um, the, the press materials don't contain any of that. I'll try to get that information for the phone review, but right now I have no idea. But you can't store music on it, so that's probably the biggest thing you need to know. You need it, It's only going to be a remote for your phone. Uh, but that's that one. So now we're going to take a look at the Honor Watch GS Pro, which is, you know, potentially the more exciting of the two because it is significantly more expensive after all. So we take off the lid there. The packaging looks way classier than the ES. We take this the watch out and then here on the side you do have a charging cable that goes from USB type A to type C and then that plugs into the charging cradle here which has two little pins to charge the watch so it does use a more traditional sort of cradle there's still no power adapter though which is probably fine because you know so many devices for years have shipped with power adapters uh, that have USB ports. So you can just plug this anywhere or even a computer probably won't be able to charge this just fine. So that's not a huge issue. So looking at the watch here, just remove the little foam. And um, the, let's start with the strap again. Uh, like the other one, but uh, it's, it's nice, it's flexible, but I think it's even better. It's... It's got a really nice soft touch to it. It feels really nice. Uh, it feels light. It feels very flexible. And you still have all that adjustability there. You can use all of this to get the, the right tightness for your wrist. The quality of this little piece here is also better. This is metal. On the, the other one, it's plastic. And, of course, the casing itself. This is a much more chunky watch. So it's thick. It's heavier. This is 41 grams, if I'm not mistaken. 45? 45 grams, without this, not counting the straps. Um, and it's, it's still, I think, uh, the framing, the frame here might be metal. Uh, just like the other one, That's it's not said in the, the press materials what material, what this is made of. It feels pretty solid. The back, I think, is plastic, though. And you do have all the sensors there, as you'd expect. Um, and then on the front here, you have this dial. This is actually stainless steel. Uh, but looking at it up close, there are some weird things I see here. I don't know if this is intentional. But there, are, there the coloring... Uh, let me try to align that. There are some issues with like the coloring of the... of the silver of the steel, I mean. Like, it seems this color, like, there at the edge, you see here. This doesn't look super clean, but it's not a huge issue, I would say. Uh, so here you can see that there is two buttons on this one, so it's a little more functional. And this one also has a round display. So it feels more like a traditional watch, you know, most watches tend to have round display, so it will feel a little more like a watch. Um, I personally actually really like rectangular displays. I really like the one on my Apple Watch. I think it's a, 
a better way to display most kinds of information, though you do get this nice lump here, uh, with the, the circular uh, look. And certain parts of this do look, you know, more designed for, for the round watch um, screen, but I, I tend to prefer rectangular ones. Still, this is a 1.38, I believe, 1.39 inch screen AMOLED, and it's got a 454 uh, pixel uh, diagonal. So it's a circle, so the resolution is the same no matter which way you go. So it's 454 pixels across. It's pretty nice uh, pixel density. It looks very sharp. It looks very nice in terms of the colors as well. So it's a, it's a nice little watch, uh, it's a nice display. And in terms of the features you can you saw here, this is pretty much all the same things you get on the, the ES, but you'll see here in the music player that you actually, it says uh, add music via the Huawei Health app. So this watch can actually store music. They say up to 500 songs. So you can just store music locally here. You don't have to have your phone connected to stream the music. Of course, I'm assuming you can still do that if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, still the notifications on here. In terms of the operating system, everything is very similar. So the top button here does the same thing as the other button does. So you, you get to this menu here. Uh, even though the other screen is bigger diagonally, um, this one feels easier to read and bigger because the other one's just a very tall screen. But here you get um, if, uh, bigger letters. And it has pretty much all the same um, features as the other one, though I don't re recommend it. I don't. Re I don't remember this from the other ones. What I meant to say, um, the workout status. I don't think you get this on the ES. Do you? No. Yeah. So the workout status option does not show up here. Um, and you also have a compass on this one if you scroll further down there's a compass somewhere around here yeah compass there you go actually there might be a couple of things like air pressure is not on the yes uh, the compass is not on the yes so there's a few features here that the the gs pro has that the the yes doesn't and if you go to the workouts i think you'll find that there are also some things here that you won't find on the yes, like I'm, I'm, I have to compare directly because I could be saying something wrong. But there are a, f a couple more workout modes in the GS than there are in the the yes, and I yeah. So I'm seeing here hiking, for example, is something that's only on the GS Pro because it does have a barometer, so you can you can tell your altitude. Uh, skiing is also something that's new to to the GS Pro. So it's got a few more sports that it can track. Uh, it's got, you know, background at the activity tracking like the other one. Um, it says here uh, it's got professional running guidance. I'm not completely sure what that means or how you would find that. We've got running courses. What is that? Let's take a look at that. Ooh. So there's a bunch of running and walking courses for different lengths and oh wow, 66 minutes. That's a long time. Um, so we got a bunch of exercises there, of course, and there are some features exclusive to this, um, to this watch, like the GPS route back. Now I'm not sure how to access that yet. So, <laughs> um, Maybe it's in the settings. I actually don't know. Uh, this point. Uh, uh. Oh, so yeah. So the down button, by the way, you can. The the lower button is customizable. So here, by default, it takes you right to the workout, so you can start a specific workout if you want to. But you can customize it to be a shortcut to something else. 
and workout settings what does that do so you, you can have it out of the tech on this watch that's enabled by default that doesn't that wasn't the case on the other one so that's an interesting difference there um i actually don't know for sure how you get the route back feature to enable i assume you need to be on a a specific kind of workout uh say if you were hiking if you go to the settings mm, go not like that reminders then no so it's not in the hike option what about mountain hike okay so it it will use a gps here so i assume this is where you will get that feature so the gps route back what it does is that once you start the adventure whatever you're doing it will record your trail on on you know, while you're on your way to wherever you're going and then it will remember that and once you reach your goal we can stop recording and it will guide you back to your starting point so if you're going to a place you've never been before and you're not completely familiar with the paths then you can just use that to guide you on your way back to where you started and you don't get lost so those are a few exclusive features obviously the watch is way more rugged too so you can it, it's meant to be taken on adventures like that more uh dangerous sort of things but uh, and it scored a lot of the same the same stuff just with you no know, more advanced sensors and things like that um like i said at the end of the day personally i always prefer this clean sort of look with a rectangular face and just the display popping out like that but if you're an adventurer or someone who goes out hiking a lot and stuff uh having this sort of bezel protecting your screen and not having to worry all the time about hitting a watch against something and damaging the screen that's also a, a nice advantage so it don't very much depend on your needs but yeah so that those are some first impressions of those two watches again i'm not very familiar with the huawei software so i'm, I'm gonna have to take some time to learn it but i am interested in them uh i've heard good things about the huawei watches especially sleep tracking i've heard that it's a lot more detailed than what i got in with the with the oppo watch even though i don't care about sleep tracking that much i just want to see how well it works um but yeah that's it for this video i will be reviewing these two in the coming weeks probably starting with the gs pro and i hope you guys liked it and i'll see you guys next time